<laughs> We're gonna find out, dude. <laughs> we are definitely gonna find this out. I love this. Llama loves it. I mean, it's a cool idea. No, I think the Orchid Rush Shinji. into like an Aghanim Scepter would be good. You're saying, yeah, it hits. You know, you do have the problem of like, there's a ton of Meepos, but yeah. with an Ags, it actually just makes it so it hits everything around the hero. So we'll have to see. It hits, uh, you know, battery assault affecting all units near him could be pretty cool. They also did pretty heavily buff the Aghanim Scepter in this patch. So now he's no longer like stunned for four seconds after overclocking. He mm -hmm. just, uh, mm -hmm. he just gets like slowed, right? He's like, he's not rooted, but he has like a hundred percent move slow or something. Oh, oh man, I'm so excited for this game. Oh, so ready. Down this here we see they, cool. yeah, they're using the sentry to block this camp. This is, they see it's Doom 5. They don't want Doom to get some busted-ass creep at the beginning, so they're going to block this camp. I wouldn't be surprised to see them block that small camp or body block it later on, at least once the laning begins, and just try to prevent Doom from getting any form of useful creep at the start. Sometimes you see, like, the heroes smoke to, like, where the bottom outpost is, and they'll, like, block the easy and medium camps there as well. So I've seen mm -hmm. that a few times. I actually don't okay, know if that ward saw moves. I don't think it did. I think it got that off somehow, just barely. Yeah, and actually, we see you see these deep wards they're placing. They're suspecting some kind of lane swap shenanigans, I'm guessing. And well, that's what they're hoping the to see. I mean, they, they want the Razor in a Dragonite lane, 100%, right? So they are the ones doing the lane swap here. And they're going to be running the ET into the safe lane. And they're trying to scout this out on the side of Heroic, but... They have yet to find it. They will see the Elder Titan down here now, and actually they're bullying Schofield, but Whoa, what a blast off from KJ! Very nicely done. The flak as well. That's some good damage. I. I don't even know what lane we should focus on. Like, all of these lanes are very interesting. We got a clockwork in the mid lane versus a Meepo. How many times have you guys ever seen that? That is so rare. Dude, this so is like every have ET in the me, safe lane. <laughs> all right, maybe, maybe you've seen it a lot more than I have. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is going to be a really cool game. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of what these teams have come up with. Like, it's... South America is one of the regions where teams will focus so much more on getting the counter picks uh, over like picking the meta hero. Like they could have just picked mm -hmm. a Pango. They actually could have mm -hmm. just picked Pango here. And instead they're like, nope, let's run core clockwork, ET. You go to safe lane. Like we want the, the, the lane counter pick, right? So this is super cool. And honestly, the Dragon Knight lane struggling a lot here against the Razor for the exact reasons we expected, right? Like just that static link, super annoying. Radiance courier has been killed. Yeah, and I have to wonder how many times K1 has actually played DK carry. He he tends to be known as a very heavy farming player. DK not really that kind of hero. So we see he's only like bronze rank on it, but I mean that doesn't tell the full story. So I'm wondering if he's going through any like discomfort with this hero as well into a counter matchup. Yeah, I'm wondering if he's gonna go for something like a uh, a Midas, which is like typically what people used to do on the carry DKs. They would go for a Midas. I I hope he doesn't because it does not feel like a very strong uh, you know item these days, to be honest. So we'll see. Agreed. Looks like he has Mage Slayer queued up for now after Power Treads. We'll see if he changes his mind later on. KJ takes a lot of damage there. It does have a, a salve though available. And the three minute Lotus is going to be important for both of these teams here. So Razor and Gardic should be able to get that fairly easily. Gardic knows Mid what lane. he's up for. All right. I mean, Lumpy just having a good time here against the Meepo, honestly. Yeah, doing pretty well to start. But Meepo's not known for dominating the very... Oh, that is so cool. You see Analog actually rooted Lumpy under the tower. And... Oh, kills everywhere! 
That was a nice deny. He was uh, chasing him for quite a while. Uh, what was Analog doing? He rooted Lumpy under the tower with one creep left so that the tower would hit Lumpy, but Lumpy instant fortified to keep that creep alive so he wouldn't tank the tower. That's neat. This mid lane is so bizarre. <laughs> the Meepo now getting his second copy. That's the that's yeah. where Meepo really picks up. The first few levels you just get by. Now this is where he should start ramping up. Yeah, and you, you don't have any chance of getting the, the water runes against this guy either, so he has to walk base here. I mean, the good news is that he pushes the lane fairly quickly on the clockwork, just with battery assault and the rocket flares, so he's not going to miss too many creeps here. Maybe only, like, one or two so yeah he only misses one creep instant tp back to the mid i mean this is that's perfectly fine they're looking for vitali on the bottom lane that's a great find if they can get him defensive disruption but kj is here blast off cooling down in one second should connect and it does that's gonna be the first blood here almost five minutes into the game moose has stacked up a lot of poison here looking to try and grab divai llama but he is out of mana now so won't be able to keep that damage rolling. Great rotation. I mean, honestly, Lumpy? I think if you're... Oh, he's Lumpy? Oh, he's okay, he's okay. I was gonna say, I think if you're Beast Coast, you would rather... You, I think you're perfectly fine playing a tri-lane bottom because, I mean, the more heroes, the better it is for Elder Titan. But also, your Razor versus DK matchup is always going to be Razor favored. So, you don't really, like, kill the DK, right? Because he's got two points Dragon's Blood. But you just deny in his face constantly. Yeah, he's honestly last hitting better than I expected. Considering yeah. the Razor in his lane. Oh, does he get to the range for the Disruption? He doesn't. So close. Another block on that camp, though. Doom still has no creep on uh, for the Devour yet. He's just two points, Scorched Earth, one point uh, Infernal Blade. Well, All right. This clockwork started off okay. It seems like Meepo's now just back to regular pace, so I guess it wasn't the lane counter that they were expecting from this clockwork pick. I, that's what I'm like. I'm, I'm just trying to see, like, where does the clockwork fit in? And it, it wasn't winning the lane because that tower is dead. <laughs> yeah, six and a half minute tower as a Meepo. KJ's oh, coming to gonna snipe steal this the uh, Wisdom Rune. He actually might not be able to with the Doom. He has Infernal Blade. Oh, he's got the Blast off. Okay. Yeah, Gardic needed to hit that Wisdom Rune. Or he needed to hit the Infernal Blade for sure. Does get the Disarm. We're going to see a kill onto the Wyvern apparently, but Gardic can't actually chase down KJ. He's going to rely on the Razor to wrap around, and, well, KJ realized... Oh, dude, he canceled the Infernal Blade again. I think he doesn't, he wants to make sure you can TP cancel. Uh, okay, that's why. Okay, Lumpy secures the wisdom rune on the other half of the map for his team. This is the slowest kill in history. Should have blast off soon. He's got to finish this. <laughs> Lumpy from downtown, the literal opposite side of the map, gets him with the rocket flare. All right. Good stuff. Thought we were about to see him blast off across the the tree the line and, TP. and get away yeah well k1's actually hit level six first here on this dragon knight and with that razor actually struggles in this lane now because you don't easily get the static link and the damage from elder dragon form absolutely stacks up so they're gonna try and rotate some heroes in here maybe how soon is et what's he going for first Looks like he plans to get the shard first. Radiance top tower is under attack. 
it, I mean, I guess it reduces the cooldown by like eight seconds or something. That's pretty good. And the reduced cooldown is what you want against a hero like Meepo, right? So. Alright, forget that. He misclicked. He's got Ags now. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Like... I don't know what just happened there. Yeah, I definitely I mean... thought it's like Ags into Echo or Echo into Ags, what I usually see from core ETs. Maybe it's different now, actually. I don't I actually don't even know if you need Echo. It's dropped off. Yeah, I Eagle think the... <laughs> yeah. I think that Ags go is probably correct, but... Um... <laughs> The Meepo, the way Analog plays this is he doesn't go with the Diffusal first. He almost always goes straight for the Mega Meepo. And so I've seen him literally have a 12-minute Aghanim Scepter on a Meepo mid and just run around as Mega Meepo, like ganking lanes. It's pretty crazy. Top lane, TP in from Divine Llama, has the Winter's Curse, will drop, and Elder Titan comes in just beating down the Razor here, but able to survive for now. Split Earth coming through. K1 surviving for the moment, but they get him. The bonus damage there just popped from the Shadow Demon, and now the Gyrocopter trying to get away, but it's not looking good for the boy. They got him. Gardic securing the kill. Nice rotations in from Beast Coast getting these two as Lumpy cutting the creep wave here. Bring all five heroes, it kind of works. Port this game are a little under level. I'm not sure who that hurts more. I think I think Heroic really wants this six on KJ because it's a lot of early game damage. Everything to get some off this Gardic kill? Tempting it. I mean, Gardic is kind of scary. Three points scorched earth. Like, it's a heavy commitment to bring this guy down, and he does a lot of damage, so... They actually just leave. They do not want them to make that commitment. Meepo is having a great time, though. He is just casually farming around the map. Oh, mid lane. Hookshot off the mark. Oh, that was a definite kill onto the Gyrocopter, but... Unlucky there for Lumpy. Maybe just a little bit out of his comfort zone on a mid clockwork. It's hard to say. <laughs> uh, certainly possible. All right, ET core starts slow. You just have to take time to farm up the Aghanims, and you usually need an attack speed item after that. But once he hits that threshold, terrifying, absolute terror, especially against a Meepo. Yeah. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. All right, Doom's got Doom. That's a big pickup. Both the supports on Heroic aren't still not six yet. Well, Schofield's about to pick it up in the mid lane. I don't think he can try to do anything before. Like, you just have a level advantage here with the. Uh, Having a powerful ultimate that the enemy supports don't have. Steals the wisdom rune. Or the invis. They will smoke up on two heroes here. Lumpy wants to put this hook shot to good use. I mean, the DK is absolutely killable by this guy. You, you talked about the fact that battery assault is a ridiculous amount of damage if he finds his hero, but he walks right into an invis techies instead. And there is no way you hit that hook shot now. What an unfortunate. Uh situation there but yeah with I mean, doom honestly, there well read by the kj he yeah knew. with doom there it totally would have they would have had the damage to kill a dk who's usually quite tanky the analog just picks up a huge stack here on the ancient camp as agonim scepter is done there it is the 12 minute 45 second mega meepo is online which meepo is your favorite I don't know if I really give them names, but probably clone number three. I'm partial to the second one. Hmm. Radiant are scanning. I like Doom's build, brown boots straight into blink. Not even gonna finish the triangles. 
Yeah, I mean, it makes sense to me, right? Oh, yeah, that's wait. kind of a funny... They were trying it, but... Maybe not. Ooh. Demonic Purge and then just walk away. Top lane. They found the Razor. He's no way out of this one. So... You're gonna start running into some issues if this Razor gets caught out like this. He did go for the Mage Slayer after his Falcon Blade, which is not a super common item, to be honest. On this hero, they will be able to grab the Dragonite bottom, thanks to the Doom. As the rotation in from moves as well. No points in the Demonic Purge available. And Divine Llama will push them away on the Wyvern. This guy does some serious damage now. He's got the Double Bracer, Treads. His uh, Mage Slayer, I think, is on his Courier. So, yep, it is. Dude, he's actually doing an Ag's Rush on the Clockwork. It feels weird to call in an Ag's Rush when the enemy enemy mids already had his for yeah. <laughs> a couple minutes now, but it's just the nature of Meepo versus Clock, I guess. It'd be really cool once it comes online. It is a, a lot of extra power. And he's going to need to make good use of it because I, I feel like the mid Clockwork hasn't well i mean one zero four maybe he has i guess i'm just like, not sure what they envisioned out of out of the mid clockwork so i don't know if they're happy or not with the, where it's at yeah i mean he's at the point now where he's like hook shocking uh hook shotting between like camps in the jungle to like get to the camps faster and farm so mm -hmm. you know that's not like an ideal scenario for your mid laner The gold net worth advantage, definitely starting to pull away here for Heroic. Like, Doom has two points into Devour now. He has his Blink Dagger. If he can find a Centaur, I mean, he'd probably be pretty happy with that. But you're going to start needing some big items for this Razor as well. Like, he needs a BKB. He needs, like, a Sanj and Yasha. Article almost missed the Observer War. We got it. We're good. Oh, okay. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm deeply invested in the Vision game. <laughs> Hey man, I'm okay with that. The vision game is big. I feel like Fusel's done. I think Beast Coast. I, I I actually think this Elder Titan is the carry of this game. I, I think as long as they buy time for him to pick up like two or three items, they are in a very strong position. So I I think Clockwork Mid's job is just Space Maker and even Razor being played by the carry player typically Gardic. Bye, Gardic. Oh, one more rocket rush. Oh, saving it for analog. This guy defusal now. There we go. Welcome into the earth. Yeah, this uh, Meepo is entire is like really scary. He can kill anyone on the map that he sees. So it's like you pretty much have to avoid the main Meepo entirely. Bitch. Like, look at all the space ET's been getting. This is usually the carry doing this, and it is the carry. It's just the offlane player on the ET this time. And I'm actually a little worried for Heroic. Like, they haven't done anything about this ET. And I do think he is the strongest hero versus Meepo. Yeah, Meepo does not build bonus. Dude, another hook shot off the mark here. Even committing the Aghanim Scepter as well. So, I mean, you have the Rocket player spam here, which is nice, but... Uh, they still have the tooltip saying self-stun duration for three seconds on the overclocking, even though that's just not at all what it does. It's all right. It's not like it's literally unplayable or anything. Gonna grab Roshan pretty early. Yeah. Uh, Heroic does have a coach, so pretty sure in between the games, told him make sure to pick up all your items. It is hard to do Rosh. Grab everything. Luckily for them, first Roche only drops one item, so I don't think they're gonna they're gonna miss this one. But second Roche, we'll see. You know, if they took the coach advice. I see Nagus is left behind. It's true. Uh, Vitaly gonna TP on home. He is close to that Aghanim Scepter. I mean, he is. A hundred about to get exciting. It's about to get very exciting. I think I mentioned before, there's really, there's something very funny in Dota 
about heroes dying really quickly or not dying like at all. And ET, uh -oh. he is quite AJ. surprising. Uh, they're gonna find him on the back side. The flares coming through. The clockworks overclocking though does expire. Gardic does find the kill on the KJ. He has the doom available, looking for the real Meepo. Will connect, but. He's in Mega Meepo form, and he is running away fast. The buyback on this Techies does come through. I mean, overall, really good pickoffs from the side of Beast Coast. Gotta be a little bit careful here. As, dude, you are you are 30 gold from this Ags. You cannot afford to die on the ET. Oh, nice disruption. He needs to get the Earth Splitter off, but I don't think he's gonna do it. Not in time. And now 200 gold away and 30 second timer. Oh, keep his career alive. Don't so lose rough. It. He's got to keep it hidden. Do not lose this. I'll tell you what, it would have been a huge surprise to them if he had managed to finish Ags and have it delivered right there as they're going on him. Suddenly just starts swinging. There's a really good gank bottom if they can get K1 here. The, the flare spam is just doing an insane amount of work. Great four staff though from the Lama. The hook shot in though from Lumpy. You can't winners curse him solo, so who are you gonna go for? And they do manage to take down K1 Divai Lama trying to buy himself some time, but in comes Analog. Schofield here as well onto the backside. Took a decent chunk of damage here to the clockwork as he's isolated. Missile will connect onto the razor, buy him some space. Lumpy cannot get away. And Gardic trying to bring down Divai Lama, but he's just walking him down with the Arctic burn. And it's gonna be a great turnaround here for Heroic. Double kill for Schofield. Radiance middle tower is under attack. The razor does TP out at least. I mean, the razor is getting pretty scary. We're seeing him do some serious damage in these fights, and clockwork with the flare spam is also pretty terrifying. But Elder Titan has yet to show up, and there it is, the Agnum Scepter. His net worth was basically like 2,500 until he got this, because he had all of the components sitting on his courier. Yeah. But now it uh, is done. Got nothing. We'll have to see. All right, so he'll get an attack speed item and probably the shard. And he's just going to be able to bait it out. Because this is the really annoying thing about the Echo Stomp, is that you can toggle it at the last second. So you can just throw it out, start the stomp, and every all the supports that you typically hunt for, like they have to react. Because if you actually stomp them and come in, you'll kill them in two hits. So they have yeah. to pop all their defensive stuff, and you just get to decide, like, ah, I was just kidding, guys. I'm not actually going. Yeah. And then you do it again, and they're like, oh, shit, my Ghost Scepter's still on cooldown, you know? <laughs> and then you died at two shots from uh, from the ET. So, yeah, he just needs a little bit more. I know it's like it's kind of slow for the ET to come online, but once he once he does, it's crazy. And you have a little bit of a greedy support in the Doom as well to somewhat make up for it, right? He's got the three points Devour now. So Gardic has been casually farming on this hero as he's... Got himself his Blink Dagger, the Eye of Vizier, looking for a Lotus Orb next. So he's doing okay. Missile Spam coming out mid lane, gonna be very annoying. There it is, the Blink in, the Doom. They've caught the Winter Wyvern, and honestly, Gardic just gets destroyed. He gets soloed by Schofield. And in comes Pay with that BKB, just trying to Static Link, bring down this Dragon Knight. And honestly, it gets him, but you gotta be careful. The Wyvern's back, baby. The Doom did not finish him off. Where is the Elder? The Elder Titan died. Doesn't have his attack speed yet, so he can still be killed pretty quickly before he gets the damage out. Did it... Why? I don't think this is their timing. That felt pretty forced. Like, the ET, no joke, carry ET still needs farm time. He needs to go finish farming all the items. I, I don't think they should be bringing him into these fights yet. Man, that gyrocopter just instantly killing the doom from like 100 to zero was just ridiculous yeah it brings a lot of magic damage and depending how many call downs hit like each rocket does now that it's level two each rocket does 400 damage so if you get hit by multiple it is a, a very high amount plus the rocket barrage and the homing missile plus the shard so tons of magic damage from Schofield. yeah well, Vitaly needs to get to that Echo Saber. Uh, they're just going to smoke up again. 
And they are looking for an, an opening. There is no Aegis this time. I mean, Analog here in the mid lane would be an opening, but Lumpy is just sitting under vision. Does see KJ just hook shots in. He's gonna go for it, but again, it's the damage from this Gyro that's just doing way too much. And Lumpy on the backside gets on top of Analog. The BKB from him about to expire. As they do manage to stop the Razor, he has a BKB active, will be forced to use it as he is quite strong, but Moose also just getting forced back by this gyrocopter. So your clockwork just dies, going for a uh, techies. They're, yeah, I, I really think they're engaging too soon. You need this level 15 talent on Elder Titan and an attack speed item like this Echo Saber and then like maybe even the Shard, but at least with those two items, the Ags plus one plus 15 talent. Like he's not scary until then. So I, I know they're, they're being pressured by this Meepo, so they're feeling like gotta try to engage, but I, I feel like when you pick this ET counter, you have to understand like, okay, we're gonna, we have to survive the early game, but that mid to late game, we're gonna have this insane damage on ET. Yeah, I, I think at this point, I think this clockwork is not really paid off like they wanted. I, I think you would have, like, he gets this Aghanim Scepter and, you know, it, it's really good for just, like, split pushing, to be honest. Like, you can just flare down waves globally, and it's, I almost wonder if that would have been the better option for him instead of trying to fight. Is, uh, he is really struggling net worth wise now. This is a rare purchase. He's getting a nullifier on Meepo. Does it work on ET through immunity? I didn't Dude, think it did. If you can dispel Astral Spirit, Aghanim Scepter, then this hero is like officially dead. I, li I will lose my mind if you can just nullify it. It's like, bye. Lose all your damage. I feel like it is definitely dispellable, but I, I like I would be shocked. I remember checking this and then the day after I checked they changed it and I forget which is which, so I'm gonna I'm gonna double check because it's actually really important for this matchup. Okay. Uh really good item for the winter wyvern he actually gets the vampire fang this game so the bonus 300 night vision pays dividends when you're in the arctic burn um but also just that spell life steal this hero does a ton of spell damage so this is cool makes him a lot tankier a lot more deadly at night bottom lane gardic about to die is it's going to be a rotation of some analog from the trees the nullifier comes out and he is instantly dead uh, level 20 right. meepo now Check the wiki. I am a Dota 2 player, so reading's not my strong point, but I'm pretty sure it does not pierce the debuff immunity. Yeah, I would hope so, man. If it actually did, that would be ridiculous. Now, the question is, is when the debuff immunity ends, do you instantly dispel off the damage? That, I think it does. Because the duration is 10 seconds, right? But your Astral Spirit, Aghanim Scepter bonus... I mean, I guess when you're against a Meepo, it can last longer than 10 seconds, can't it? <laughs> it actually probably does, yeah. Well, Almost to his level 15. All right, we're gonna go into the Roshan. Uh, to be honest, Beast Coast Roche fight is very scary and they will know about it now. The question is, will they make it in time? There's gonna be the first flare. Clockworks overclocking on cooldown for 10 more seconds as the spirit's going through trying to find his opening. Vitaly's gonna get found. Stomp does connect, but he's gotta get the spirit back. Will it make it in time? It does. But the Winter's Curse comes through immediately and he didn't actually hit a Meepo, so that's just expiring right away. You have lost your Elder Titan, you have lost your Shadow Demon, and Lumpy will go down next just to the supports. Pay on the run, trying to get away from this Meepo, but the Earth Finds coming through one after another, and the Razor caught up by the Nullifier. It's only a matter of time before they close the gap. Oh, nice shoot to the left side. Going for the TP. Dude, wow. what a TP <laughs> out. That is sick. Yeah. 
Honestly, Gardic trying to cut waves and make the most use of this, but actually Schofield's gonna repeat kill him. Mud golems have no damage to deny. Oh wait, wait who's dude, killing what a who? Chad move. He's out. Oh, he's commit like, to yeah, it. Commit can't. to it. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. He knows he's got it. Yeah, it's like maybe he gets the deny off to the creep, but that's actually really funny. All right, I don't even mean to sound like a broken record, but I think Beast Coast like just missed the timing there because they weren't like letting ET farm. Like he was so close to 15 and the Echo Saber for that second Roche fight. And if he had like spent even just an extra minute farming, he would have had that. But then he also went in first and I don't think that's what he wants. Like I'm pretty sure this yeah. clockwork mid is supposed to be going in first. And that lets you line up the spirit and the earth splitter and everything. But instead he gets caught out half killed before the, the spirit even comes back. Uh, and then he just dies even with the debuff immunity. Yeah, I mean, if the clockwork had his overclocking available, it's like totally different, right? They're just, they're massively flaring the Roche pit. They're seeing the smoke get popped. Uh, they'd have a little bit more info to work with and like maybe he hook shots in and finds something, but it just hasn't happened, right? Like we haven't seen Beast Coast connect how they need to in these fights and it's resulted in a 16,000 gold advantage now for Heroic. Pate hey, does have a Lincoln Sphere now, so that is, I mean, it's great against DK's Dragon Tail, the Missile, as well as the Winter's Curse. Like, all these really strong single target stuns will allow him to just kind of continue to run down maybe the heroes that he wants to find. Goodbye, Courier. On the high ground they go, though. Okay, this will be a big stomp, a big spirit here. Earth Splitter's coming through, Schofield, uh... Wait, no, the Cogs! It just blocks him out. He's afraid to go in, it looks like. Is There's a Winter's Curse at the ready. He could just one-shot his ally. He has another curse coming. Oh, first stomp coming out from this ET. Will he find his target, though, is the question. They're just getting to work on the lanes of Barracks and K1. He's got the Black Dragon now, level 18. With the Manta just scouting out the base. I mean, this ET's fallen pretty flat. Yeah. He had 700 damage there at the end. Well, and you, the, he can't, he just can't attack. You know, he's too scared to commit. He doesn't have the shard, so he can't, he can't just immediately be on top. He has to walk in and he's worried about this Wyvern just ulting him. Also, like, your spirit's movement speed is tied to your heroes, and so K1's just running this, like, Manta illusion at him. So he has, like, a hundred move speed, and his spirit does as well. So it's like... That is a cool he play. He actually, he can't find the... He, like, can't get the spirit out onto all these heroes. Gardic having some fun in mid lane, maybe. Uh, about to have less fun, though. A lot less fun. Uh, he's gonna work on a Lincoln's. I think he needs the shard. Maybe he's hoping he'll get it from a Tormentor. Yeah, he really does need the shard. I mean, if, if he goes in there when he got that like stomp onto three where the gyro is, he just goes in and one shots the gyrocopter and can walk away. But Radiance bottom tower. I mean, maybe not one shot. Yeah, he, he has twenty two hundred health apparently. Jeez, he found a balloon, so converting a decent chunk of extra health for him. Actually thinking about it, since his armor is being removed and he needs to buy armor, is Nullifier like the best thing he can buy? Okay, forget all that. I mean, it might be. Meanwhile, Lumpy goes in and is instantly dead, ends up just jumping an illusion, and, and Elder Titan comes in. Does A have thousand damage. damage, but instantly Winter's Curse, and they will just chain stun down this Elder Titan. It is going to be a sad existence for him if he does not get out. He turns around, does have... Another 500 bonus damage, but they're getting no damage out. The Cold Embrace nullifying it all. The Dragon Knight just pushing this Razor back into Vi Llama is just artillery at this point. They have, they're just so slow between these uh, Winter Wyvern and, and DK illusions. That's, That's it. Why Make people just ban the Meepo. It's it's so hard. Like even though you have theoretical counters, like actually executing versus Meepo, who has so many so many tools with the shard and the ags it's so tough 
Oh, he got the dig off. No way. And now Elder Titan can't find his kill. Garnick on the backside doing his best. In comes Lumpy. He will get him, finally, but that's just the agents. You gotta get out now, and honestly, I don't think you are. Clockwork burned to death here by this Winter Wyvern. The Razor dying outside the base. Divai Llama low. Pei will buy back into the game here, trying to do what he can, but Analog's got his, his, his sights set on this throne. Elder Titan, can he get it done? He's got to do something, man. He's looking for Schofield now, but the four staff to safety, the nullifier does come out constantly. It's, you guys, your throne's dead. That's it. That's game two and the victory going to Heroic because they will be moving to the grand finals of this qualifier. They got me boned. Me boned indeed. Analog's Meepo is so good, man.